I was out last night with watching uh, Damage Inc. We were out doing Met Club thing and all that, and they got on and they said something about Death Magnetic, and they were like, what do you guys think? I was like, yeah. You know, and they said, ah, oh, the boys are back. And I thought, I wonder what James would think about that statement. Are the boys back, or did you ever leave? The men are back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it's all, it's all who we are. Yeah. So you never really we, went anywhere. We, well, we've been a lot of places, yeah. but we didn't, we didn't try to go away. Right, right. That's <laughs> what to, I. We tried to do our best. That's all. We, that's all we do every time. That's what I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I understand what they mean by that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, it's this with the sound that they're used to or what they would like to hear, and that's great that yeah. some people. Uh, People say that with I would say the the utmost respect, and and yeah we we didn't go anywhere. Well, we've been exploring is what sure. we've been doing, yeah. you know. Kind of full circle. Yeah, yeah it doesn't. Yeah, that doesn't mean that we're not going to explore again, you know. But that's what felt right at that time. In '93, you had uh, talked about being afraid of Metallica ending. That's where you were at, at that point in your life. How do you feel about that now? Where, how, how does that thought sit with you? Well, I'm still not ready for it to end. <laughs> but does it scare you? You mentioned being scared. Scared is a word that could be used again, but uh, I don't want that to happen. I think we realize how important Metallica is to us, and anything that's that important in your life as God, something you've been doing forever or something you wouldn't think of not doing uh, you know guys that we hang out we're family we're writing we're we're on a mission together this is our gift and to not have that would be a little scary a little yeah. Better, yeah. Yeah. the songwriting process you mentioned writing um, how has it changed for you from I, I notice musically and lyrically I hear you know you used to be more in character and I'm noticing as time has gone by that you seem to be more comfortable coming out with the lyrics as you. Am I wrong? Am I? Is that a? No, you're not wrong. Okay. Uh, every everything I've done is honest, and I believe that it's me. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's always after the fact. You know, you can always look back and uh, be hypercritical of everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm, we're, we're pretty we're pretty good at that. We're 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 perfectionists, mm -hmm. and uh, we try to do our best all the time. Um, but as far as you know, as far as the lyrics go and writing, we're up for whatever feels right and sounds best at that moment. And uh, you know, with every album, it's been that way. Uh, Saint Anger, I listen back to it and go, "Wow, there's some pretty cool stuff on there." But what were you thinking about that snare sound, or? What are you thinking about the the overall vibe of this song? Or it's like you know what you can't think about it too much. It's just it is what it is. Uh, but especially lyrically, mm. I have to be honest where I am, and I I'm not I'm not doing it. I'm just I'm putting pen to paper and kind of I'm starting to go somewhere or writing where I think I want to go and I end up somewhere else. You know it's. Just, it just happens. You gotta is, let it happen. Is it uh, change for you? You've been sober for a little while now, for a few years, correct? Is that is, is there, do you notice a difference in your style, or uh, or is it just a maturity? Thing? Eight years, three months, not to count. But yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. While we're on that, being addicts, me too. When we're in our addiction, we don't feel simple joys. I remember coming out of mine and noticing things that I had never noticed. I was sitting playing with grass and I thought the grass was just beautiful. It was just a simple joy that I finally felt. What, what are the simple joys that you noticing? Simple. I don't know if uh, uh, being on stage and noticing people's eyes in the audience is simple, but I don't know if everyone gets to do that, <laughs> but yeah. but seeing seeing the gratitude, mm -hmm. that's something I see now that I didn't before. The only way I could get some kind of a reaction was 
a certain way, right. you know, being angry or, you know, flipping off or something, mm -hmm. I could get a reaction and, and feel, okay, uh, uh, I'm vindicated somehow. Uh, but this way, I, I, now I go up and I just do what feels right and the next right thing. And everyone else out there is, uh, is giving back what, what I need. <laughs> You know, it is, uh, uh, you know, the power of attraction is one of those things I never knew existed. So whatever I'm putting out is coming back, which is a great thing. Went and saw you guys a year ago, and I've seen many times, and never walked out going, eh, I always, great show. <laughs> and he can attest yeah. with me. Last year, walked out of the Fresno show, and I was like, holy shit, they were good. And mm -hmm. just... You were just on point, and I noticed one thing: you didn't drop one f bomb on stage, <laughs> not one. And I thought into a mic. Into the mic. <laughs> yes. Okay. Fair enough. But I thought, wow, is it is it because your children are watching? Or, I don't know. I mean, what you know what I mean? What, is it? It is my children, and uh, uh, also, you know, the I don't know. There's a part of it. You know, that sounds silly, but I kind of for myself, I need to tell myself. Hey, if I wouldn't let my kids do this, why am I doing it? Something like that, you know? Like, you're eating that? I wouldn't let my kids eat that. Why am I doing that? Right. So kind of taking care of me that way. Uh -huh. uh, and I think, I don't know, the foul language has its place. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it just comes out, and my kids know all the words because I've said them, and sure. they give me a hard time for it. But I don't think it's... It doesn't have to be part of the everyday vocabulary, especially up there. Uh, you know, that word's a pretty powerful word, sure. and it works. Uh, but it doesn't doesn't need to be every other word. It uh, it kind of cheapens the point. I, I'd say mm -hmm. if you're going to make a, a very strong point about something and throw in something in there like that every once in a while, it's fine. But it doesn't doesn't seem to fit in what's going on right now. That's what that's how I felt about it. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, it's it's very on point, and you, you were just like a machine. <laughs> and it felt the same way, right, Doug? I mean, yeah. It was cool. just the same vibe. What kind of father are you? Mm. And what would your would your kids agree? What would your kids say if I had if they if I could ask mm. them? What would they say? Is he a pushover? Is he? Eh, let's see. Well, they're here. Uh, well, they're seven, nine, and eleven. So they've learned they've learned a few tricks on how to get. You know, Dad says yeah, Mom. You know, and I haven't mm -hmm. said a word. You know, stuff like that. I'm I am a lot looser mm -hmm. with the kids. My wife's a lot more uh, uh, hard line. Uh, I let them, I let them breathe uh, in their creativities, in their, uh, you know, my son's playing drums on the table at dinner. You know, my wife mm -hmm. goes crazy, and it's like, wow, that's a cool beat. You know, so we, <laughs> you know, the opposites attract. I, I would say I'm, I'm a little, I'm a lot looser with them. You know, take them to whatever fast food every once in a while too right, right. Um, uh, but when it comes down to it my wife's not around I'm on it you know and I can handle it easily no problem my way we've got two ways of going about it that's all and the kids try to find the incongruency between the two of us and sneak between sure. them you know they're smart kids yeah. uh, but I think uh, helping them be creative is what I, I like doing with them uh, and um, yeah, you know, breaking the rules here and there mm -hmm. with them, which is okay. Letting them know that you know, with the uh, right amount of safety, you can do this. You know, let's not limit ourselves. Do you see anybody uh, in one of your children following in your footsteps as far as well, I don't even mean rock and roll, but maybe, but the tattoos and the hot rods and the. <laughs> You know, the skateboarding and the... I kind of hope so, and I kind of hope not. It's, yeah. you know, they're they're on their own path. Um, uh, my my role is I'm the guide until they're 18, and I will always be the guide if they want me to be. But they're, you know, they're on their own path. They've got their own higher power of sorts, and I'm I'm just guiding a little bit. And the thing is, they're guiding me. They're, te I mean, they're teaching me so much that I don't know, mm -hmm. or didn't think I needed to know. Uh, but 
you know, as far as music goes, they can pick up, they can walk into the, the music room in the house, mm -hmm. pick up a guitar and blast it. They can sit down at a drum kit, they can sit at the piano. Whatever they want to do, the stuff's there. I'm not going to force them to do anything. They take singing lessons. My daughter takes bass lessons. My son took drum lessons for a little while. And they all love singing. Mm -hmm. um, they they, they want to play, but you know, it's not. I'm not forcing anything. It's not a big deal. They have my my daughter has a very creative bug as far as drawing goes. So I'm kind of feeding that a little bit. The greatest gift Metallica has ever given you, hmm. Metallica. The greatest gift that you've received. Ah. Oh. I would say I guess I would say the, the freedom to express my gift uh, I wouldn't know I don't know how else I would have ex expressed what's in me <laughs> I would have found a way for sure but to be able to do it through music and reach a lot of people it's, Metallica's connected me to the world.